guys? This is Los and Anthony with the Malco Cast. What's up, buddy? <laughs> Thank you guys for joining us. Uh, we're over here at the Malco Cast Studios, and we are going to be talking today about some drama. You know the good drama you guys love to listen about, and this drama involves Eddie Vedder. <laughs> but from, is it really drama? From Pearl Jam. <laughs> yeah, it is. I mean, he was talking that shit about Motley Crue. Uh, was he talking shit or... Being honest, <laughs> like, he was he was he was being an honest, and this is a story that we saw in Blabbermouth. Apparently, Eddie Vedder is promoting his new album, and he gave an interview to the newspaper. I think it was the New York Times, <laughs> but he basically said that he hated girls, 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 and he hated Motley Crue. Not taking too kindly <laughs> to this news was none other than Nikki Six. Get off the lawn! <laughs> lawn, lawn, lawn! Nikki Six... <laughs> Nikki Six ain't playing that shit. Man, whatever. <laughs> Nikki Six is... 60 years old, man? Like, come on, dude. But Eddie Vedder's up there, too, though. Is so, he that old? Yeah, no, I mean, he he's up there. I mean... To us, I mean, it's, it's all comical to us. Um, but let's just recap kind of like what was said. So in talking to the New York Times, Eddie Vedder basically says, You know, I used to work in San Diego loading gear at a club. I'd end up at shows that I wouldn't have chosen to go to. Bands that monopolized late 80s MTV. The metal bands that, I'm trying to be nice, I despised. Girls, 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 and Motley Crue. Fuck you. I hated it. I hated it how it made the fellas look. Okay? I hated how it made the women look. It felt so vacuous. Big big word. Vacuous? Vacuous or vacious? Vacious? Yeah. I think it's vacuous. But it means lacking original thoughts. That's I mean, right. We did our homework for this podcast, guys. In case you couldn't tell, our Google search proved to be <laughs> fruitful. <laughs> um, so in hearing this, of course, he's not going to let it slide. <laughs> no, these are wars here. And if you, if you mess with Motley Crue, you're going to get the horns. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, uh, let me see. What did he say? If you swipe at my band, I'm gonna swipe at your band. <laughs> Are they swiping right or left? He, that's that's what I'm trying to figure out just right now. He basically came out defending the band, and I, I'm probably gonna have to make a cut here, but I'm gonna put it up here so that you guys can see it. Uh, okay, so in response. To fans' tweets, Six compared Vedder's vocal technique <laughs> to singing with marbles in your mouth. He called them marble mouth, guys. Um, and wrote to a Pearl Jam fan who tweeted in defense of Vedder, Remember, there were zillions of brown-haired bands for brown-haired fans. Go find them. You will know them by the bored <laughs> look on their face. So he basically called Pearl Vedder, Jam bored. He, call, he called Pearl yeah, I mean they are boring. Um, <laughs> I don't see. I don't think Pro Jam is boring. I Jeremy Jeremy's broken. Okay, that's like elevator music. It's now, a great right? song. Okay, but when you compare it to a song like Girls, 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 I mean, Vedder's it's a party right, song. But Vedder's right. It's a thoughtless song. But here's the thing about it, though. That kind of music was never meant to provoke any thought. Thought provocative thought. It was more party music. Right? Not all of Molly Cruz's songs. Though. No, not all of them. Are not you know. Uh, I mean, Home Sweet Home. Was Home a, Sweet Home was you know deep. Doctor Feelgood's got a message behind kick it. Kickstart my heart. Kickstart my heart. Yeah. It's yeah. About a time, or Nikki Six overdosing, and they had to resuscitate. Right, but they, their riffs were more upbeat. They were more up tempo, right. and the messages were there. But you know, you had to kind of be looking for the message, or you would, you would. I just think it's stupid that they're both, they're arguing, you know, like, to me, I feel like, uh, I feel like Vedder, like, Vedder's comment was unnecessary, like, why even, you know, like. Why even say it, huh? Yeah. 
Yeah. Throw shade at a band. Yeah. Is that a good look, you know, you think? I mean, when these bands get into these arguments, I know there was a recent, uh, uh, like, riff started between, was it Corey Taylor from Slipknot calling, and, uh, calling uh, uh, Kanye West? No, like, MGK. No, yeah, MGK that too, but he was calling Kanye MC, West whatever. stupid for having his song, his album, on a proprietary device a gadget that that you need in order to listen to the album so i mean there are always fights <laughs> within what, the within the community right <laughs> it's funny that cory cory taylor called Kanye stupid yeah well he what just is, he, isn't that what, like, he threw him shade i don't know if those were his exact words but isn't that what cds used to be though it was like a <laughs> something that had well, yeah but you could play a cd in a car or in yeah. a boom box or you know in a dvd player or whatever but anyways if somebody <laughs> wanted to have talked shit about Malcontent back in the day... They did. They did, okay. Yeah. Give, us some, <laughs> give us some details. We want some details here. We had There was a band that we feuded with, uh, Low Budget. <laughs> From uh, Old Sassoon, Fairfield. They had a lot of members. Yeah. And uh, they didn't like us, and we didn't like them. <laughs> and uh, they played our spot. Cheers. Yeah. The night before we were playing at Cheers, and they got their whole crowd to start chanting "fuck malcontent" and "Cheers." Wow! But it didn't mean anything to us because we got our whole crowd to start chanting "fuck malcontent" to us while we played the next night. So it was like, wait, you got your crowd? Yeah, to, to chant start... it, chant it to us because it it didn't bother us. Oh, it didn't bother you. Okay, it's just kind of like to troll them. Yeah. <laughs> to be like, yeah. Um, so I mean, what was what was the uh, cause of that beef? <laughs> Sticker war. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first, guys. It was who could put up the most stickers around town and promote their band. No, it wasn't that. What was it? They started covering up our stickers with their stickers. Oh, that's it. That's what we call in the business a dick move. Dick move. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> Yeah, it was the whole thing was retarded though, and it sucks because me and uh, a bunch of the members of that band were friends. We're still friends. Are you? <laughs> yeah. Do they watch the show? I don't know, but we laugh about the sticker war. <laughs> <laughs> the great sticker war of nineteen uh, of two thousand one. Oh, <laughs> two thousand one. So who knows? Anyways, but, but back to the topic. Back to the topic, we're, we're going off the rails here in this discussion. Um, uh, yeah, I think that, to me anyways, the, the glam rock of that era, uh, it was fueled by MTV and by the look. I think Eddie Vedder does have a point. Like, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of like a running joke in, in music that, you know, the guys were wearing lipstick and they had their hair spray up and they looked like girls and... You know, they didn't look like guys, you know, like Metallica <laughs> did or like, you know, even even the people from the grunge movement. <laughs> True story. My sister used to have a big ass poster of poison up in her bedroom. <laughs> yeah. And this was back in uh I wanna say eighty eight. I walk in her room and I go, Man, them are some hot ass chicks. And she's all, those are dudes. <laughs> and I was like... Dude, dude look like a lady. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit. Like, so, yeah, they did look like a bunch of... Uh, yeah, they did look like a bunch of women. Um, <laughs> I don't know who made that style up. I guess it was just part of, of being in the 80s. Being an outcast. David Lee Roth made that style up. <laughs> yeah. I want to see... I, I want to say David Lee Roth kind of... Because he was wearing, like, the little neckties with Van Halen. And, you know, like... <laughs> Yeah, he had a little flamboyancy to him. But then, okay, so so, uh, but when here's the other. Who thing, do though. you think started the that look? Yeah, we want to know in the comments. But here's the thing. Here's here's what I want to ask you. It's like when you saw those guys, it's like, whoa, man, look at those guys. You knew that they were like in a band or that they were like rock stars. I thought they were like, but oh, go ahead. Oh, but eccentric is what I'm trying to say. They were eccentric people who who dressed different. No, I didn't know they were dudes. I thought they were women. My point is, <laughs> sir, <laughs> is that 
in the grunge movement, where dudes, oh, where uh -oh. dudes were just wearing you lumberjack know, clothes, lumberjack clothes, <laughs> and you know, unwashed jeans, and you know, looking like scrubs, pretty much. You didn't know that they were in a band. Like the showmanship left. Like they didn't give a fuck, right? They just wanted to make music and cry in the corner, right? <laughs> cry in the corner. Um, it, it was it was a different time in music, right? And it was just more laid back. You know, you didn't really know that they were uh, rock stars per se, and I think that's that true. I mean, the showmanship kind of kind of declined during that that grunge era. Yeah, but the showmanship uh, came out in other ways. I I think in that era, like because you would get some amazing performances by these bands. Yeah, they weren't dancing around and you know uh, singing girls, 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 but. They had some amazing performance, live performances that those those other bands like. I don't want to say it's fake showmanship, but the grunge era they actually put it like that was to me like real showmanship because they're putting their heart and soul out there in the lyrics. You know what I mean? Do like, you, so do you think the musicianship of that era was was better? No, absolutely not. Not no the like. 80s hard rock 80s like metal like no the the musicianship was great i mean pearl jam they're a good guitar player and musicians or the musicians in that band they're great yeah Soundgarden, great nirvana eh i don't, I don't think their musicianship is great yeah um alice in chains i don't think their musicianship is great i think they're alice in chains is a good band <laughs> I, I mean, they're that's a great actually band. one of my favorite ones. Well, they're a great I, band, and I, I I enjoy listening to them. But I don't think musician when I hear them, I don't think of them as like. Control's a great guitar player, but I think the rest of them are okay. You know, like they're good, good band. They're good at what they do. Yeah. But how could have uh, Nikki Six handled the situation? Do you think he should have ignored it, or you know, do you think that he handled it in a way that's like? You know, I would like to hear more of like uh, the line of questioning to Vetter or what they were really talking about, because, you know, to yeah. me that just thinks that's more of a, at that point in time in his life, Vetter that was a mindset for Vetter. Yeah. He, I don't think he's really saying that now. I mean, maybe he is. You know, maybe like, he is. Yeah, yeah. But at the same time, he was a kid when he was working in San Diego or whatever. You know, yeah. Like, yeah. So I mean, I get it. <laughs> like, yeah, I just yeah, I think that throwing shade at bands that you don't like, the best way to like really really throw them shade is to not talk about them, because for one you put their name in a headline, yeah. and now it's a trending story on Blabbermouth, and now people want to listen to Girls 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 to see how shitty it is. So you're helping them. <laughs> you're helping them by talking shit about them. So I mean, my advice to them would be to just keep your Keep your mouth shut. My first album that was ever given to me was Girls, Girls, Girls. Yeah. I, yeah, I got it from Santa. <laughs> In my stocking. Oh, you must have been a, you must have been a bad boy there, uh, Anthony. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, you go back and listen to it, that song's terrible. <laughs> but I like Molly Crew. I am a fan of Molly Crew. Too Fast for Love, love that album. Shout out the Devil, love that album. I'm a fan of Motley Crue. I'm not so much of a fan of, of Pearl Jam. I mean, I do like one of their songs. It's Black. And Jeremy, I think, is alright, too. But I, uh, I, Dude, I, you gotta listen to... The, Ten is a great album. That is a great album. There's some great songs on that album. Yeah. yeah. There's also one that goes, Oh, you got to hide your love away. <laughs> is that the one? Is that how no, I sing it right? <laughs> I yeah. like Pearl Jam. I like Molly Crew. I don't like that style of singing, though. But to be honest with you, neither one of them has released a hit in 20 years, so who cares, <laughs> man? Like, like, who cares? <laughs> who cares? <laughs> that's cares? right. Who cares? And I guess that's where we're going we're gonna to ask you guys. Do you guys care who's better? Do you guys... Whose team are you on? Are you on Team Pearl Jam? Team or, 6? Or are you on Team Molly Crew, Nikki 6? Or are you on Team Eddie Vedder Pearl Jam? We want to know in the comments what you guys think of this little beef that is happening. 
And uh, yeah, I mean, thank you guys for joining us today. Subscribe. Subscribe to the channel. Subscribe. We're almost at 300. Almost. Almost at 300 subscribers. Thank you guys uh, for getting us this close. And we will see you next time on the Malco Cast. Peace. Well, that was slick. <laughs> Phone drop. <laughs>